We got everybody? Can you guys hear me okay? Do you hear me through the mics at all? Mic's better. Fantastic. The microphone is better. Great. It's good to have everybody here tonight. I'm going to try to walk around a little. So first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our amazing sponsor tonight, Business Wire. I'm going to introduce them here real quick. We have Garrett and Warner, who have been incredible behind the scenes putting this whole thing together. Um, so I want to bring them up real quick and introduce themselves. Garrett and Warner, can you guys come up from Business Wire? Thank you, Josh, and media leaders, also to the ROC Santa Monica. This is a really fun venue, so you guys should check it out. They have events here, I think there's another couple of events happening this week. And so we are excited to be here. Uh, so Business Wire is actually a service, as you guys all know, that PR and media and communications professionals use to sort of push out their messages and then also to measure them. So the question these days is that PR folks are getting placed with more responsibilities from marketing. So as social media, as the mobile space changes, Business Wire is obviously there you know, to help get that messaging across. But um, these are gonna be some great tips today. And we're gonna content, <laughs> we're gonna focus a little bit on content marketing, of course, and PR, and how small businesses and startups can maximize their own brand and take advantage of all the resources that are out there. So with that, Garrett, do you wanna add on that? Yeah, just to wrap it up, yeah. As these panelists can attest, um, obviously content, you know, we've heard many times before is king, uh, but, you know, when, when getting your content out to the media, um, it's hard to differentiate from the masses, so um, one of the things that we learned from our last panel <coughs> was, um, you know, building relationships with the media, you know, attending events like these, and, um, you know, kind of networking and, you know, meeting the, the Natalie Jarvis of the LA Business Journal, or the the Michael Carneys of the Pano Daily, you know, kind of helps to provide that um, that personal touch. So when they're kind of writing about, so when they receive your content, um, they kind of know they have a backstory about who you are, what your company is all about. Um, so it kind of helps form their story. Um, so yeah, um, I'll let them take it over and handle this. Um, so here you go, Josh. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for making it up. Let's give a round of applause for them. They provided all the food, everything, to set it up, and took care of the venue. These guys are amazing. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. I'm going to use the mic. Even though my mom says I'm extremely loud, I'm going to try and use this so that we can stay excited. It's really an honor to have you guys come out tonight. I'm going to set some very, very simple goals for tonight. First of all, it's not about the speakers. We have some amazing people up here, but it's not about them. It's not about rock. It's not even about business wire, even though you guys are a Berkshire Hathaway company. It's amazing. It's about you. Tonight, it's about the audience. Tonight, my goal is that tomorrow you have one, two, or three key takeaways that you learn from these amazing people, and you use them tomorrow. If you can do that, just tactical takeaways. There's so much here in LA, even though I was born and raised here, there's so much buzz and so much talk about big stuff, 40,000 feet, that I think that if tonight we can keep it tactical, you start using some of these things tomorrow, then we'll be all better off, and I will have felt successful. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for coming out. You all have a copy of my book, Light, Bright, and Polite, that was a bestseller last week on Amazon. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. On the inside front cover, my company is hosting a special virtual conference in April. Right inside the front cover, you will see a uh, little advertisement for that. It's where 24 of the most tactical people that I know in my life that I admire and that I want to hire, we put them in a video series for less than 100 bucks, and you get access to all these people that I go to to advise the world's biggest brands. So I want to give you access to them. You can read that at a later date. You guys are all on the email list. I want to introduce you to our amazing panelists, and I'm going to grill them like crazy over the course of the next hour. First of all, Nicole Jordan, and I'm going to have her introduce herself. Every time we move the mics, I hear a lot of stuff. Just like, you know, maybe it's me. I usually, we'll blame everything tonight that goes wrong on me. Um, Nicole Jordan is incredible. Then we have CJ Nance, who's in PR. I'm gonna describe these people. I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips on them in a couple minutes. Then we have Serena Erlick, and that's how we pronounce her last name. It's Earl Lick. Mine is Oaks, like 
O-A-K-S, and hers is Ehrlich. And then we have Edo Cohen down on the end. Now, the reason we have these people up here is not because they're coasting on amazing book deals or they have a whole lot of money or they're incredible, they all are incredibly good looking, especially you, Edo. Thank you. You can tweak that. They're not up here to do that. The reason we have them up here is they're all people that we either want to admire or hire. They're very successful, they're no BS, and we're gonna grill them tonight. We're gonna to get tactical tips from each one of them. So I have four great questions, and then we're gonna see where this railroad takes us. We've done a bit of planning and a bit of uh, preparation for this. Uh, question number, first I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna let each one of you, in six sec seconds or less, or six sentences or less, whichever one you choose, keep it light, bright, and polite. Please give us an intro of who you are and what you stand for, really quickly. We'll start with Nicole. Uh, Nicole, 15 years in communication strategy, and I stand for the belief that communication is the central nervous system in every business. Woo! Hello, thanks Josh for hosting this. I'm CJ. I have been in Hispanic marketing, advertising, and public relations for over a decade, and my passion is everything bilingual and paying attention to the Hispanic market because it's here, it's huge, it's not going anywhere. So to create culturally relevant material, advertising, PR, quality, that's my passion. So that's my business. Hi guys, I'm Serena. Serena on Twitter and Serena in real life. I uh, have a very different career path than most people here. I started my career for 12 years at Business Wire and then moved from that into PR marketing, and I'm now the director of marketing uh, and then heavily into the mobile industry. So I've got a lot to talk about, and you guys will have to shut me up. Yeah. Great. I'm Eno I'm a founder and CEO of a startup called Simulation. Um, it's my uh, third startup. We had one mobile that had a uh, pretty uh, some uh, interesting stuff that you'll never learn about these people if I hadn't had the chance to grill them this week. And you get to guess who they are, and then we're gonna get down into PR and social media. Hey, Linda, if you're around here, could we turn up the house mics one notch, and turn, not the lights, the mics for the two house people, and then turn down the, uh, the other mics, the other three, I don't know how to do that. Um, one of the people up here, and you get to guess who it is, was asked to leave college due to bad grades, then came back to enroll and end up winning the race for student body president. One of the other panelists on this panel tonight wanted to be a ninja so bad that this person took three years of Krav, Ma Krav Maga and two years of Muay Thai boxing. One of the other panelists on this team tonight was told by this person's mom that when this person was eight years old, PR would be a great career for you. <laughs> and our final panelist up here is so is an OCD self-proclaimed baker. And this person will rebake something three to four times over the weekend to get it perfect, because this person wants it to be right. Now, I haven't given away any of the sexes, so you don't know who is who. We're gonna get started with uh, question number one. And question number one's really important. What are two key social media PR tips that have helped you in your business? And I want you to keep it tactical. If you start getting really strategy and 40,000 foot and any BS at all, I'm gonna call you out, all four of you. And I gave them some rules. I said, you're allowed to disagree with each other. If you say something that seems a little BS, feel free to, to call your colleagues out. Now, a little hidden fact, that Serena and Nicole know each other very, very well, so they might, oh, yeah. they might start oh, yeah. arguing. Yeah. So let's start with Serena, because she is very animated. Serena, what are two uh, key social media PR tips that have helped you in your business? Uh, I think that, you know, every, do you know, okay, here, I'm gonna tell you this, but you're gonna be like, oh, no. One is don't say anything online that you don't really want to say tomorrow online. Um, they, I've seen careers crumble because people post, especially in the heat of the moment, on social networks. Social networks are not calling your best friend and complaining to your mom. Social networks are professional, I mean, it's a representation of what you want to be. If you want to be a jerk online, well, people don't hire jerks, so don't be a jerk online. 
All right, the second tip is relax. Everybody's, when, you, when you're managing an account, for example, I used to manage Mattel's social media account. When they were attacked by green peas, everybody freaked out. The first thing we had to do was relax. Because all of the pressures and everything, the entire attack, just like I'm going out of BC, the entire attack is on Facebook. The world is bigger than Facebook. It doesn't affect your stock price. I don't consider it a social media crisis. I just consider it a situation that can't be handled. So the other thing I would do the same is relax. Remember, remember that your social media channels are your ugly baby. Everybody hates your ugly baby. It hurts when people hate your ugly baby, but life's an ugly baby. And so just relax. If you embrace what you can't change, don't try to change the things you can't change. Be clear, and those are my tips. You did great, ugly baby is a key takeaway. I love it. Ido, what are two key social media and or PR tips? And let's let's just let's just break this down a little. Each one of these people brings something very different. So we're not up here to say they're experts in any one given thing. They're all trying very, very hard in their realm. So Ido may not be the world's best PR person, but he brings something to the table that I call him about every week. I feel like I'm always bothering you because you're really good at a few things. And he's an amazing advisor for my team. And he paid me a lot of money to. So my wife's never told me that before, so I appreciate Josh talking about it. Um, I, uh, I guess I actually use social, I'll be honest, I mean, I, I think the PR people here are gonna get mad at me, but I use social media and PR um, more for SEO than I do for uh, actual customer engagement. So, I mean, I know that's probably a mistake, but you know, I'm, I'm sort of a startup and I have a limited number of things I can do and I do know how to do SEO. But for me, um, I did notice that, um, that when our converse, you know, when we're trying to push a certain set of uh, keywords or uh, focus a certain market, or, you know, get those types of visitors to our website, um, there's actually a lot to be done with PR and social media. And, and I guess one of the thing, one of the tips I'll just give you is that, you know, when people are talking about your website, when there's conversations around your website, and they're talking about specific keywords, and you try to sort of get those in there, your website feels alive, and that's something that Google really likes. And I can, you know, I'm happy to talk more detail later. I know Joe, I'm doing a session for Josh at his uh, video boot camp about, and I sort of get the details about it. But one of the things that I noticed is that bloggers don't have the same sort of journalistic standards that like journalists have. So, I mean, for me, I've been able to just literally just give bloggers, you know, anywhere from $30 to $150 and have them write an article about it. And I know that, like, a journalist would never do that. Like, if I called a journalist at the New York Times, <laughs> he would never do that. But, but there's certain bloggers that, you know, these guys are, are they work at home, they don't have, like... People are including LA. We title it. We catch that. Uh-huh. I not, see. not paperweight. Wait, what did you say? Sorry. It's what? It's, it, we, we package that so that it's not as easy, and we call it influencer outreach. Okay. That's a bullshit word, everybody. We're calling it first. You ready? Influencer outreach. You'll hear that in other panel discussions, but not here tonight. Serena, you just lost two points. I love you. But I would say, again, yeah, I don't want to, like, you know, I'm just, I, I use it more, I know how to do SEO, I use it more for an SEO, as an SEO strategy, and I know that there's a lot to be had with reputation management and customer acquisition and being in contact with your customers, but I'm just, you know, for me, that's, that's the where, where, where I focus uh, those energies. Nicole, the note taker, what are two key social media or PR tips that you have for us? This is on. I take a lot of notes. Uh, so one of the ones, I, so I, just to Josh's point, I have straight PR communications background, 15 years. So in-house, agency, private consultants, so I've kind of sat on all sides of the table, and I deal with a lot of CEOs who constantly need expectations set. And these are the people who run and are like, we need a Facebook, what's a Facebook? You know, like a few years ago, and, and that's that's one thing is, but we've all dealt with these people, right? They're like, what the fuck is Twitter? We need Twitter, like, get a set up for Twitter. And they don't know what it is or how to use it and apply it to a business practice, right? It's like a checklist thing, and so, you guys know this, but social media is a hungry animal. That's why I say over and over and over again. It is a hungry, hungry animal, and you can't just feed it once and then walk away. You shouldn't bother, because then it's bad representation for your brand. So um, a hungry animal, don't create a program just because you need it. Like, if you're not going to commit to it, and you're not going to integrate it in, that's the other thing. People create social media programs in silos. 
And it's like, you're gathering all this information on your social media team, which is fucking awesome, but if you're not porting it to the rest of your business, you're, I'm sorry, I didn't cuss a little. I'll try it. Polite I'll language. try it. <laughs> I thought you were going for it. Somebody hold up your book every time she does that. I'll give you a dollar. Hold it up. Oh, I forgot we're streaming. Uh, so, um, so don't create a program just because you need one. Um, I think uh, when you do social media stuff, the insights that you have develop some kind of process to share that information with the rest of your business. It's not, don't keep it locked up inside your social media marketing team or whatever it is. There's insights for product development, there's insights for engineering, there's insights for your CEO for thought leadership, there's insight for your sales team, your customer service team. So you are part of the nerve center of communication if you're gonna be a social media person, so know how to do that. And then the one other thing too is, you know, if you're dealing with clients, you always have to set the expectations. And that's one thing that I have to tell even my clients now is that it's not a silver bullet. Like, it's gonna take time. We don't wanna buy a bunch of Twitter bots and suddenly have a high follower account. Like, that's not the kind of game that we're trying to play. And if it is a game they're trying to play, you should try to maybe fix that or maybe not work with those people. How many of us work in an agency? Raise your hand. How many of us work at a brand? How many of us are independents? Cool. Raise your hand if you do more social media during the day as opposed to PR. And raise your hand if you do more PR versus social media during the day. It's pretty split. It's awesome. Okay, cool. So what are two key... Let, let me break it down one more time. I'm going to be the realist in the room. So, what? No, we're going to do it. She's next. But, but before I intro her, I want to tell everybody why she's on the panel. I'm live or bad. <laughs> so Nicole, very traditional, is very well known in the industry. Serena, very well known in the industry as well. Serena and Nicole are kind of BFFs, but Serena would be more high tech. Nicole would be more traditional. Then you get an Edo who has a really rad agency and some technology that's super sophisticated. He runs heat maps on the front of websites, so he can see if a thousand people visit Palms Casino. I've been hired by Palms to run his system and show Palms people are confused. They're clicking on this button and they're trying to buy, and then they have to go click somewhere else. And then Edo realized that on his own site, this is a true entrepreneur. He realized, well, we need to be really good at SEO. And the PR teams don't know what they're doing, so his team developed such good SEO tactics that other people now hire Edo's company to do SEO for them. So he's got a technology startup and a social media agency all built into one because he got really good at it. And we all need to kind of do that. Then you should all wonder, why, what, what is CJ's talent? Well, I'm like a lot of people that are small business owners. When they look at a lawyer, they're always like, oh, I hate, I'm so sick of lawyers. But they, then they say, but my lawyer is great. They always have that person that they hire, right? Well, I say the same thing sometimes about PR. Sometimes PR firms, you hire them, and if it doesn't end well, it doesn't end well. Well, I've hired a few PR firms, and then I went to one, and CJ worked there. And CJ ended up putting me on KTLA Channel 5, and I went to 40 markets with this two-minute segment, unlike anybody else could do. I said, CJ, you have to be in the room for this. You put that book on TV, and thousands upon thousands of people saw it. So with that intro, and you're bilingual, which is pretty incredible. Hola. Hola. <laughs> CJ, what are t two key social media PR tips? Well, this is based only on my experience. Again, I'm not giving out super sound advice, but I think there's, you've got to find your voice. There's a fine line between being very transparent and then being scripted in terms of social media. And you want to be cautious because you could either be communicating on your own behalf, your brand's behalf, which in my case would be a PR firm, or a client. So just be, no matter what, you need to be authentic and find your voice. But for me personally, I always, this is just my personal style, but I like to err on the side of more transparent and authentic and kind of real-time communication and light, bright, and polite, as opposed to scripted and maybe something that could be considered cold or dry when you're trying to get out a brand's message. Because people respond to, at the end of the day, authenticity and realness and real time and just be normal, be human. And whatever your message is, be that or convey it. So again, whether you're it's your own brand, your client's brand, or just kind of find your voice, but make it authentic. And again, it could degree, varying degrees of transparency or scripted, but whatever it is, be 
have some consistency and kind of think about that for a moment. Does that make sense? Yeah, very much so. You had a better answer at dinner uh, last week. Can I get that answer? Yes. We'll hold them accountable, everybody. Put it over refresh me. Yeah, yeah. You said, don't be afraid or intimidated by reporters. They still need to deliver content each day. Compliment them like a peer when you like what they wrote. Don't be shy. Be complimentary to them on, so on, on social media about their writings. They probably stayed up all night writing it, and it's brutal. Definitely. I think just like we do, whatever your job is, you spend many long hours doing it. I'm in the trenches every day with reporters, so they're scrambling for deadlines, scrambling for photos. Can I get a quote, please? This, that. I mean, they're writing stories and working hard, so for you to take 10 seconds, they love it. And how hard is it just to be, hey, great article, I love that. Just be real time and, and sincere and say thank you because they love it. Next time you need them for something, they might be more responsive than if you had, you know, not spoken to them for a year and a half, but if you had kind of sent little tweets or little updates over the you know, course of a few months, they'll know your name, they'll just recognize it. But you're on their radar screen and it says that you're not an idiot, you actually do read their news, you know, you read their news coverage. And the reason why that's even more important now though is because I can think of a thousand examples just in the last month alone of reporters that I've known for many, many years. They're now at different outlets, and these are big outlets. We're talking USA Today or Univision. I mean, super ABC, World News, whatever. You want to have a relationship with them because they will 